Hi everybody, it's Dan and welcome back to my kitchen. Today we're going to be making another chocolate Sailor Moon cake. Since Netflix is dropping the Sailor Moon Eternal movie, I can't wait, I'm super excited. So let's go ahead and talk about it. It is going to be a four layer chocolate cake filled with fluffy vanilla buttercream, some simple fondant decorations that is really going to help turn our cake into all things Sailor Moon. I'll be sure to throw a link to the recipe down below in the description where I'll throw everything you need to make your own delicious chocolate cake, all the tools and the steps to make your own Sailor Moon chocolate cake, and of course, all my tips and tricks so you can bake right at home with confidence. Plus, if you want even more delicious, quick, gotta have them recipes, definitely be sure to subscribe down below and turn notifications so you don't miss out every time I post a new recipe. Now let's go ahead, preheat your oven to 350 degrees, and let's get started on this delicious chocolate cake. Trust me, you're gonna love it. So grab yourself a mixing bowl and add in three cups of all-purpose flour, a half cup of cocoa powder, one and a half teaspoons of baking powder, one tablespoon of baking soda, a teaspoon of salt, and two and two third cups of white granulated sugar. Then we'll just go in with our whisk and make sure all those dry ingredients are nice and combined and fully incorporated together. Then we're gonna set those aside, grab another mixing bowl, and this is gonna be for our wet ingredients that we're gonna mix together. So let's start by adding in a half cup of sour cream, one cup of buttermilk, three eggs, one and a half cups of warm, fresh brewed coffee, three quarter cup of vegetable oil, and one tablespoon of vanilla extract. Now we're gonna mix those together, either with your whisk or with a hand mixer on a nice low speed until all those wet ingredients are fully incorporated together. And once those are nice and mixed, we're gonna bring our dry ingredients back to this chocolate cake party and pour our wet ingredients right into that bowl of our dry ingredients and mix together with a hand mixer on a low speed or whisk until you have a nice smooth chocolatey cake batter. And though we're looking for that smooth cake batter, try not to over mix. It's definitely okay if there's some lumps in there of flour and dry ingredients. Just try not to over mix. Then we're just gonna add that cake batter into our prepared cake pans. And I'm using two six inch round cake pans. Once those cake pans are full of batter, just place in the oven at 350 degrees and let bake for a good 35 to 40 minutes or until your cake tester comes out clean. Once your cakes have baked and they've cooled, you wanna go ahead, level and have all of your cakes. You have all of your chocolate cake layers and get ready to stack and fill with some delicious vanilla buttercream. After your cakes have cooled, it's gonna be time to level and tour if needed so we can begin to fill and cover with some delicious vanilla buttercream. Take your first layer onto your cake turntable, spread a generous amount of vanilla buttercream frosting on top and spread evenly either with your straight or offset spatula. Then you're gonna go ahead and place your next layer of cake, top with more buttercream frosting, and spread evenly. Then you'll just continue those steps for all of your layers. And once you get to that last layer of cake, you wanna invert it so the bottom of the cake is facing up and you have a nice flat surface for the top of your cake. Once your cakes are stacked and filled, grab some more vanilla buttercream because we're gonna do our crumb coat and we're gonna cover with even more buttercream to get that nice, smooth buttercream finish. If you've stacked and filled all your cake layers, your cake should look something just like mine here. You'll notice there's a fair amount of frosting hanging over the sides. I use this frosting to spread around the outside and top of my cake to create the crumb coat. The crumb coat is a thin layer of frosting on the outside of a cake that holds in the crumbs so they won't mix into your final layer of frosting. You can always add frosting to the cake for the crumb coat, but I find that having the frosting in the filling layers already spread out to the edges actually helps eliminate any potential air bubbles, which can get caught in the frosting and work their way out, giving your cake a very unlovely, kind of pimply look. So 
So what I like to do here is I start from the bottom and while rotating my cake turntable, I like to pipe on my buttercream in an upward motion. Using a cake frosting scraper or a straight spatula or an offset spatula, we're gonna to begin to smooth over our buttercream. I find that the best way is to hold my smoothing tool upright and gently pressed against my cake while rotating the cake turntable. Really letting that turntable do all the work here. You'll wanna continue this until you have a nice smooth buttercream coating. Now, as you're doing that final smoothing, you might notice the texture of the buttercream become a bit ragged. Don't worry, take a deep breath. There's a quick and easy fix. Just grab a bowl of hot water, dip your tools into the bowl to warm them up, pat them dry and smooth. The warm metal is gonna make that buttercream nice and soft and give you a nice smooth finish. Once you're happy with that smooth buttercream frosting finish on your chocolate cake, it's gonna be time to jump right in and get decorating for our Sailor Moon themed cake. Let's grab our blue fondant strip that is lightly brushed with water on the back and wrap the bottom of our cake by making sure that water brush side is facing the cake and bring both ends together in the back. Then just cut off the excess fondant and seal together with your fingers. Next, we're gonna do those same steps, only this time we're gonna use a yellow fondant strip and use that to wrap our cake right above our blue fondant strip. Once you have that bottom fondant wrap around your cake, let's go ahead and do the same thing up top. Now let's take our second larger blue fondant strip with the ends trimmed at about a 45 degree angle and wrap the top of our cake with the brushed water side facing the cake so that both ends meet together right at the front and you have this sort of inverted peekaboo triangle shape. Now let's grab a piping bag fitted with a small round tip of our vanilla buttercream and let's get ready to add some racing stripes on that top fondant collar. Now the best way to make sure you get parallel lines is to hold your piping bag gently against that top blue fondant collar and by lightly squeezing while you rotate your cake turntable. Once you have your two yellow buttercream stripes on that top fondant collar, we're gonna take a small yellow fondant strip and place that right on top and in the front of our cake before topping it off with a small pink fondant heart right in the middle. With our cake decorating coming along nice and smoothly, let's go ahead, grab our red fondant, and we wanna roll that out to about a quarter of an inch to start our fondant bow. We're gonna take our red fondant that is rolled out to about an inch thickness and cut out four bow pieces using my template that is gonna be linked down below with the recipe. You'll need two back pieces and two front pieces. I find this very easy, very simple, especially when it comes to fondant and bows. Grab a tiny little paintbrush, a little bowl of water, because we're gonna put this right on front of our cake. Now to begin to assemble the bow on our cake, we're gonna start by lightly brushing water on the back of both back bow pieces. Gently pick up and lightly press into your cake so that the points are lined up in the middle and centered with your small pink fondant heart up top. Once you're happy with the placement of those two pieces, Lightly brush water on the back of both front pieces and gently press on top and slightly above your two back fondant pieces. Again, use the points on the front pieces to center and line up your red fondant bow. Once that red fondant bow is in front of your cake, scoot that cake to the side just a tiny little bit, grab your fondant, and let's get started on our Sailor Moon brooch. Now there's gonna be some small tiny details here, but don't worry, it's gonna be very simple, stress-free, hassle-free, and you're gonna have one awesome Sailor Moon cake. So let's start out with some rolled out yellow fondant and cut out a heart with a heart-shaped cookie cutter. Then just peel away the extra fondant carefully. Now without having to re-roll your yellow fondant, take a small circle cookie cutter and cut out a yellow fondant circle. Then do the same thing with an even smaller circle cookie cutter, or you can use the back of a piping tip. 
With those cutouts to the side, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna cut out with an X-Acto knife, a pair of yellow fondant wings. Now I've already went ahead and kind of made a template here just with my yellow fondant. So I'm gonna use this to cut out a pair of wings because I wanna make sure they're as symmetrical and as evenly sized as possible. Then we'll go back in with our X-Acto knife, add a little bit of fine details before we set them to the side and switch to working with our pink fondant. When you're ready to move to your pink fondant, you wanna cut out another heart shape. You wanna make it a little bit smaller than the yellow ones that we cut out before. Let's follow that up with a small circle cutout and using the bottom of our heart cookie cutter, we wanna cut out two triangles here. Then we'll just take our X-Acto knife, trim them up a little bit to size, and transform our pink triangle cutout to kind of like a, a small trapezoid cutout. And once you're all done with your pink fondant shapes, grab yourself a tiny little bowl of water and your paintbrush because it's gonna be time to put all these together. So we're gonna lightly brush water on top of our yellow fondant heart and then cover that with our pink fondant heart. Now for a size reference, you should have like a a peekaboo yellow trim that's just hugging your pink fondant heart. Brush a little bit of water on top of your pink heart and add your yellow fondant circle right in the middle before brushing that with a tiny little bit of water and adding your small pink fondant circle right on top. Next, we're gonna brush a little more water on the top of our pink and yellow fondant hearts. Take two small yellow strips and gently press them on top and curved towards the end as we press them on top of our pink fondant heart before giving both of those yellow fondant strips a tiny little fondant circle right on top. With our pink trapezoid shape, we're gonna take three tiny little yellow strips about a quarter of an inch long and place all three right on top of that trapezoid shape. Then we'll brush the bottom of that with a little bit of water and carefully place our crisis brooch right on top. Lastly, to wrap up our cake decoration, we're gonna take our yellow fondant circle, lightly brush with water on the back, place that on top of our pink trapezoid before brushing the back of a smaller yellow fondant circle and placing that right on top. Then lastly, all you have left to do is to brush your two yellow fondant wings with a little bit of water and place your crisis brooch right on top. So they each show through when you place that fondant crisis brooch on top. So it's like your little fondant heart has two little wings. Once you wrap up all those tiny little details and you're happy with your Sailor Moon brooch, grab a tiny paintbrush, a little bit of water, and let's get this brooch right in front of our cake. Once everything is centered, lined up, and you're feeling great with your Sailor Moon cake, that's it. We are pretty much done with our decorating. Well, our fondant decorating, but we still need to do some buttercream and some finishing details. So first up, grab your piping bag of yellow buttercream fitted with your favorite tip. Now I'm gonna be using a large star tip. It's my go-to, it's my favorite. I enjoy it, I just think it's pretty. And we're gonna use that to add some delicious yellow buttercream right on top of our cake. Now, of course, Sailor Moon is known for a lot of things, but mostly her iconic Odongo Shield buns. For our Sailor Chibi Moon cake, we used two Madelines. For our Sailor Chibi Chibi Moon cake, we used two brownies. So I'm thinking for Sailor Moon, we're gonna use two vanilla donuts. If you're interested in using my recipe, I'll throw all that down below in the description. Very easy, very simple, oh so delicious. They come out perfect every single time. But of course, you can always go out and buy your own donuts. Why not? It's quick, it's easy. Either way, grab your donuts and let's get started on these decorations to really capture all things Sailor Moon in this delicious chocolate cake. Starting with your red buttercream, pipe on a large red circle onto each donut, leaving about half an inch of empty space on the outside perimeter. Then, to add a little bit of sparkle to our Sailor Moon cake, take each donut and dip that red buttercream circle into some red sugar crystals. Now let's go in with our yellow buttercream 
and pipe a yellow outline circle on that outside perimeter, you know, that half inch gap that we left open. Lastly, let's grab our white buttercream and pipe a small circle on the outside edge of that red buttercream. Once your donuts are decorated, go ahead, grab your cake, and let's add these donuts right on top. And lastly, to finally wrap up your Super Sailor Moon inspired cake, we're gonna take some what I call fondant feather clips, and we're gonna place three on each side on the top of our cake. Once those donuts are on top of your cake, that's it, you're done. You have your own Sailor Moon themed chocolate cake that just, it looks super cute and super exciting and super awesome. That's a lot of supers, but this is one amazing cake. Well, thank you all for stopping by. I had so much fun showing you how to make your own Sailor Moon chocolate themed cake. If you're a fan of Sailor Moon or if you're a fan of all things chocolate cake, or if you're excited for the new Sailor Moon movie on Netflix, definitely be sure to give this video a thumbs up. It really helps me out. Let's me know what bacon and recipes you all like, you enjoy, and you want to see more of. Now, if you did not like this video, I totally get it. I understand. All I ask is that you leave me a comment down below to let me know what you didn't like so I can better improve my channel, my recipes, and the type of videos that I am sharing on the platform. Either way, if you want even more delicious recipes that you can bake at home with confidence every single time, definitely be sure to subscribe down below and turn on notifications so you don't miss out every time I post a new video. And lastly, don't forget, if you make your own Sailor Moon inspired dessert or your own Sailor Moon themed chocolate cake, definitely give a tag on Instagram. You know, let me see what you're baking up in your kitchen. Alrighty, well, I'm going to go. I'm going to grab a slice of this cake. Enjoy the day. Enjoy the weather. Maybe watch some Sailor Moon. Probably going to watch some Sailor Moon. But as always, I will see you all in the next video very, very soon. Bye.